Hey guys, and welcome to another Let's Play? That's right, I'm doing another one. Right alongside Final Fantasy X. But, little, little, little dramatic tension. It's made by Human Entertainment. Hmm. Human Entertainment didn't do too many things. Oh, there you go. There you go. The one, the only clock tower for the PlayStation 1. Now, what uh, we here in the States received as the first clock tower game was actually the second. So, what we had as the second was actually the third. See, what happened was the first one never came out in this country. It was for the Super Nintendo. And it was one of the earlier... The evil, the evil murderer, murderer it is. Yeah, don't don't expect too too much good voice acting here. With an eye? But um, it yeah, it was one of the earlier like survival horror game. games. Yeah. It was uh, well, basically the main character of this game because it's 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 a direct sequel. Uh, she was an orphan, and they were bringing her to this this mansion, this castle, actually, to live. Actually, that's. One one woman had adopted like a bajillion kids from the orphanage, and you know, crazy axe murderer appears and chaos ensues. So the story goes that she, if, if there was that game had multiple endings actually, which was another first, especially for a Super Nintendo game, multiple endings. But the game, the the best possible ending is you, the uh, the the evil murderer was like a. Oh yeah, it was like a superhuman demon. Fear is fascinating, uh, and she sends him to hell. You know, burns him, explosion, and then drives in the garage and whatnot. And you leave. Whoa, what's with the crazy lag? Huh? Okay, there we go. Ooh, that was weird. Okay, anyway, yeah, you drive away and you win. Game over. The story of this game is that the murderer, the axe murderer, or actually in our case, scissor murderer, returns. And this game, like I was, like the, uh, the one on the Super Nintendo, has multiple endings. Five endings for the character Jennifer. Five endings for the character Helen. Uh, and what was interesting about this game, well, to me, anyway, uh, back in the day, you didn't have too many video game, uh, peripherals. You had, you know, you had your guns, you had your arcade six, but that's about it. it. You didn't, it didn't go through too many other things. This game was compatible with a mouse. Now, I never had a mouse for my PlayStation 1 back in the day, so... I still have this game in real life, by the way. Uh, so, I used a controller. Which, surprisingly worked, but other people who like this game swear by the mouse and say, Oh, you gotta use the mouse. It's not the same game if you don't use the mouse. I think otherwise. Uh, well, yeah, I think otherwise. It, it worked. I mean, now that I'm actually... This playthrough is gonna be entirely with a mouse. And I was just trying it with a mouse, and I... Gotta say, yeah, it is more responsive. So there are certain points where, yeah, it's far superior to a controller. But, uh, like I said, I played through the game, I don't even know, I can't count how many times with a controller. And it worked. Beautifully. So, yeah, that's about the end of my rambling. I think it's time to start a new game. Click. I can't believe I'm using a mouse on a PlayStation 1 game. It's crazy. Prologue. Samuel Barton. These screens tend to lag a little bit. I'm not sure why. But I rambled for like a whole four minutes. I apologize to you guys. What's going on? Oh, I'm having a bad trip. <laughs> what on earth are you doing, Professor? I was not doing anything. Like this. 
I dare say, you do not tell me what to do. Helen, the clock tower murders are fascinating research material for me. I must know the truth of what happened. She can't take any more of this today, Professor. I'm taking her home. All right. <laughs> but remember one thing, Helen. You may be her guardian, but you are also my assistant. Yes, Professor. Now get the fuck out of my office. <laughs> Alrighty, where's my mouse? Okay, so let's start. Whoa, get away from the desk. Let's check this first. Hmm, there's a faint smell of ammonia. I don't know why I've given him that voice, but whatever. Now, here is one of the many secrets hidden throughout the game a file cabinet. Patient's records are kept here. What's this? There's a memo stuck between the pages. You found hint number one. So. While I don't need them, because I've been through this game, I'm gonna forget things. But I've been through this game a lot, uh, so while I may not absolutely be in dire need of hints, uh, when you go to the main menu, you can access them, and they they're kind of pointless. I mean, some of them are good, some of them work, but th there are some that are just like common sense. Like there's one in Clock Tower Two, where it just says you should check the med the the medicine cabinet. Uh, if you're playing a survival horror game, you kind of check everything that's checkable. But anyway, yeah, they, they kind of just, you know, help you along because these kind of games are easy to uh, to get stuck in. So, yeah. Uh, check the desk, fool. A giant pair of scissors is on a desk. They are a replica of the scissors used by the murderer in the clock tower case. These are like the weapon he used to slash up his victims. Oh yeah, great cutscene. And let's examine the bed. Gotta examine everything in this game. The clock tower murderers. The mass murder of over 10 victims in this case. How intriguing. Jennifer Simpson, only one of two survivors. I have to get information out of her for future profiling materials. I, for the life of me, cannot understand why Professor Barton is so interested in a mass murder case. It was a crazy get my laboratory. <laughs> it was a crazy guy who went bananas and killed a bunch of people. Why can't you just leave it at that? Lately, I've been doing mostly criminal psychology research. I did not expect the research word there. Hmm, the staff is still here. Alright, it's time to start checking everything because there's a lot of stuff in this room. First and foremost, this statue. This is very important. A statue. It is cold. One of the items found at the scene of the clock tower murders. It seems to be hiding some sort of secret. It would be a good idea to get an expert opinion on this. A stuffed animal. Looks like a prize one at a fair. Uh, let's talk to the lady that we're totally ignoring right here. Professor, Helen left a few minutes ago. And she looked really angry. Hmm. Well, I only told her to go fuck herself. I don't... I can't understand why she'd possibly be angry. <laughs> check this computer here, or am I not checking? Oh, I'm checking the computer behind it. Harris's desk. Clipped out articles of the Clock Tower story are scattered about. It seems Harris has gone somewhere. <coughs> Excuse me. Another computer, or is that the mask? That's the mask on the counter. That's what I wanted to check. Scissor Man's rubber mask. A kind sold in cheap novelty shops, and seems to be fairly popular. People certainly buy stupid things. Yeah, yeah. Professor, a newspaper reporter is here. Did you have an appointment for an interview? Why, no. Am I gonna have to choke a bitch? <laughs> well, I guess we have to go meet these reporters. There's still something I need to do in here. Ah, this happens to me all the time. What do I still need to do in here? What did I not check? Helen's dead. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. The same thing you said before, fool. It would be a good idea to get an expert opinion. I know, I know. 
You can probably hear me clicking like a madman. I don't care. Can I leave now? What do you want me to do? It's about the clock tower murders, isn't it? I guess they want to sensationalize this scissor man who really doesn't exist. Scissor man. It'd be cool if you were real. With the what? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> just a joke. I would hope so, because now you're my first suspect. Really, there's more. Okay. Oh, my mouse is being unresponsive. No, there we go. You shouldn't keep the reporter waiting too long. I'm trying to leave, but apparently I don't want to leave. You know, Helen and Jennifer are really beginning to look like sisters, aren't they? I guess that's what happens when you live together. They could have made this text scroll just a little bit faster. One mustn't let their personal feelings get in the way. Jennifer is nothing more than another research subject. What a dick. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, you're right. Damn straight I'm right, bitch. I signed your paychecks. <laughs> there we go. Alright. Mm, I believe the elevator is this way. Oh, here's a guy to talk to. Oh, Professor. A newspaper reporter was looking for you on the first floor. Oh, thank you. Come on there, Professor. Ah, why does it always do that? Uh, first floor. So yeah, if you couldn't tell, this is a point-and-click adventure. <laughs> Thirteen minutes in. Oh, Professor. I'm the one who called you from the Oslo Weekly News. My name is Nolan Campbell. And this is Tim, my cameraman. It's a pleasure. I'm a bit busy. Please keep it brief. Oh, what an asshole. Then I'll get right to the point. Have you been able to figure out who the murderer is? <laughs> I can't say anything for sure yet, because the victim's testimony lacks credibility. Oh, you mean the victim that's testifying? That'd be Jennifer Simpson, wouldn't it? Yes, but what about her? No, oh, that nothing really. It's it's just we saw her leaving a few minutes ago, and. Since we'd run into her, we asked her for an interview, but she refused. Oh, I have to click on him. You just said her testimony lacked credibility. I know what you're going to say. That monster she was talking about, the scissor man, and whether he really exists or not. That's it. That's right. That's what our readers want to know. Because the existence of this scissor man has become a symbol of terror among youngsters. So, really, youngsters read your paper? Yes, and that's because trashy gossip magazines like yours have sensation sensationalized the whole thing. Ouch. That hurts. Not much I can say to that, is there? Well, let's start from the conclusion. It's fact that there was a murderer who used a giant pair of scissors as his murder weapon. But that doesn't make him into an immortal monster. We're just dealing with some odd screwball. But what about what she said? She was scared. She thought she saw something. Oh, I, I see, but... Okay, that's it. Interview's over. 
I have to go do other douchebag things. <laughs> there is something I must be attending to. Ah, oh, well, okay, I understand. Thank you very much. Sorry I couldn't be as much help as you had hoped. I have to get back to the lab. I'm expecting another survivor of the clock tower murders. He's supposed to be a young boy, about 10 years old. All right, uh, second floor. Out we go. Back to the lab. Professor, the boy that survived the clock tower murders is here. Oh, has he arrived already? Yeah, he's waiting in the therapy room. Oh, that's right. I still need to get an expert opinion on this statue. I should probably ask Professor Sullivan, the head librarian at the Metropolitan Library. <laughs> Yes, but there was that old butler at the Barrows Mansion named Rick. I'll show it to him first to see if he knows anything. I'm pretty sure he lives in the suburbs. I could ask Harris to show it to him. Ask Harris, yes or no. Uh, see, this is going to choose where the next... Well, after the first scenario goes. You're either going to go to the library to talk to the head librarian... Or you're gonna go to the ha the butler's house to speak to the butler. If you, I think if you hit, yeah, if you hit yes, you do, you go to the library. If you hit no, you go to the butler's house because if you hit yes to ask him, he's going to the butler's house. So later on, Helen will want to go to the head librarian to get the statue because he will have already brought it to him. Brought it to the butler, and then after bringing it to the butler, he brings it to the library. So I'm going to hit no, because I want to go to the butler's house. All right, then. I'll have Professor Sullivan at the Metropolitan Library take a look. Okay, that's that. I should probably go to the therapy room. I think I, I may have fucked it up. But I don't know. Let's see. Run! Thank you very much for coming. How do you do? I am the instructor at the Granite Orphanage. I am an instructor. I am Edward's guardian. Edward? I thought he completely lost all his memory from the shock. Does he remember his name? No. I call him Edward because not having a name to go by makes things very difficult. Now, since this is our first day, will you answer some simple questions for me? Okay, Edward. Now I want you to honestly tell me everything you remember about what happened. Er, uh, yes. Well then, let's get started. And yeah, we're not going to go through the whole thing because they're assuming you played the Super Nintendo one, which would be pretty impossible. But whatever. Data save? Yes. And I can't for the life of me understand. You said your hard drive crashed. That's too bad. Yes, I lost all of this morning's data. 
I hope I can get it fixed sometimes today. Sometime today. Otherwise, I won't get my dissertation done on time. Don't worry. When Danny gets back, I'm sure he'll be able to help you. You're probably right. In the meantime, I'm going to step out for a bit. Would you ask Danny for me, please? Sure. See you later. Uh, where should I go? Okay. Hmm. Norway Hotel, Oslo. Police Station. Municipal Library. University Research Building. Staff Housing. The campus house where I live. Jennifer should probably be getting home soon. University Staff Housing. I know this is quite a rousing first video, but the game picks up a little slow. Twenty-two minutes. I think I'm gonna cut it, cut it off soon. I wonder if she's found a boyfriend. Yeah, okay. A, a crazy uh, murder victim. Well, near murder victim. Anyway. Uh, come on. Every time I switch scenes in this game, the mouse becomes all fucked up. I don't know why. But, yeah, we're going to cut it off now because we've been at it for a while. Uh, next time, as boring as this sounds, we're going to find a place for Helen to go while she's on her break waiting for somebody to come fix her computer. Yeah, we're just living somebody's, somebody else's boring-ass life. For now. Until the murders start, because... It is a survival horror game, and the murders will start. <laughs> Unfortunately, they're going to start next time, and this video is quite boring. I do apologize. But, thank you for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the rest of Clock Tower, and I hope you guys are enjoying Final Fantasy, because that's not going anywhere either. See you next time.